we're going to do is add first and then divide. We're going to do addition and division, subtraction and division, all in the same problem. It's been, it, take a look. If you look at all these problems in your packet right now, it's a fraction on top of a fraction. That's what it is. All right. So if you look at number one, you guys know how to handle number one already. What's this another symbol for? Dividing. All right. So you guys know the rule with division. Am I going to do anything to the numerator? All right. I'm going to keep it six sevenths. What's that division sign going to change into? Multiplication. And I'm going to change 14 to 1 over 14. There we go. I know we're not going to do the ones that easy, but I just want to make sure we're good with keep the top, change it to multiplication, and flip the second one. How do you want to handle that? I know there's no factoring. Can I cross out? Do you just want to multiply it? It's up to you. Got your calculators? Your calculators have fractions on it? Okay, let's go. Why not use it? Six sevenths times one fourteenth. Forget about reducing and crossing out. Why don't we just use the darn calculator if it's going to do it for us? See what we got. Six sevenths times one fourteen. There you go. Three over four. Yes, Jeremy. Three over forty-nine. Already reduced down for you. That's what's great about the calculator. All right, you know, we're not gonna I'm not gonna ask you to do that. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do on number two. Do you guys see the numerator, where the numerator, where the denominator is? Do we see that? Here's my division sign right here. Okay, there's my division sign. What I'm going to ask you to do, though, what do you think I'm going to ask you to do on top? Don't flip any. I can't flip anything or keep it the same. I'm going to ask you to clean that up for me, please. Clean that up. Whether you do it right here in the problem, if you want to do it off to the side, it's up to you. But we need to add those two together to get one fraction. I want one fraction over another one. That's what I'm looking for here. One fraction over another one, and I don't have that. So let's clean this up. X plus 1 plus X. Another thing I need to do a better job of is just start calling on anybody I can at any time. Here we go. Frank, common denominator, because they don't have a common denominator. Okay, give me the two denominators. Uh, one and X. Okay, so what's my common one? One X. one X on the bottom, done. There's X. All right, what do I need to multiply each of them by here? Here we go, four, three. Olivia, what should I multiply the X by? Remember the denominator is one and my common denominator is X. X, X. yep, so everyone go ahead and multiply it by X. What do you get, Olivia? X squared, good work. Plus, keep going, Olivia, what should I multiply that next one by? One. one. Yeah, it's already the common denominator, so it's just going to be X squared plus? One. one. Great work. All right, there's my new numerator right there. Division changes into? Multiplication. And what's happening with the six? Okay, everyone see what my problem is now. X squared plus one, which I got from the addition, times, flip the set, flip the denominator, one over six. And now this is something, okay, I shouldn't say this anymore after yesterday, but this is something we've done a lot and most of us can handle. Can you factor X squared plus one? No, no it's not difference, right? It's adding, it's gotta be subtraction. Anything? No. Anything? No. All right, so what's left on top? X squared plus, we're multiplying, one. one. And what's left on the bottom? And that is as far as I can go here. No crossing out, unfortunately. No factoring, unfortunately. So here's what we're doing. You're combining the top and the bottom if you can. After I add and subtract, 
Then I change it to multiplication, look to factor and cross out. That's what we're doing. Adding, subtracting, and multiplying all in one problem. Number three. You want to clean up the top for me? Right? Make two make please make the top into one fraction somehow. So whether you do it right there in the problem, off to the side, x minus 1 over x. I need to combine those into one fraction, please. Find a common denominator. What is it? Here we go. Ryan, what's my common denominator? 1x. One. One x. Good. Okay, what do I multiply each of them by now? 16. Let's keep rolling. Olivia, oh, you're on. You should be the expert here today, Olivia. What do I multiply that x by? Uh, one. Remember, it's over one, right? Yeah. Here's one. There's my common denominator. What should I multiply it by? X. Darn right. There you go. What do you get? X squared. X squared. What should I multiply the second fraction by? One. Just one, right? Because it's the same as my common one. So minus. One. Everyone ready? So there's the top now. X squared minus one over X. Keep going with me here. I want you to rewrite this for me. Keep writing it for me. 18, Oriana, what's the division going to change into? And what should I do with that bottom one? Yeah, that's great. Look, I, do I need to add or subtract? No, it's already done for me. So I'm just flipping that sucker. X over one minus X, done. Unlike the last one, we're going to keep moving. Come on. Come on. Emma, tell me anything you want to do. Um, it's the same thing as the first one. Yep. Got it. Next. Anything else? I'm not even going to say anything. Just tell me what to do next. Connor, seven. Out. Where? The negative x minus 1. Where are we looking? x minus. What do you want me to, you said cross out, so what do you want me to cross out? Oh, uh, you can't do that, never mind, sorry. Um, you cross out the x's. Okay. Oriana, back to you. What else, anything else I can cross out? No, no, you were right. Oh, you were right. At one minus x and x minus one, but I'm not. Uh, now I gotta have a negative one because you just crossed out opposites. All right, those are opposites. And I think that's about it. All right, what's left on top for my final answer? Seven, Connor, going back. What's left on my on the top? X plus one. X plus one. She forgot something. Oh, the negative. And the negative. Can go right outside. Nothing left on the bottom. You can put it over one, but it doesn't need to. There we go. Final. Anything. Look at four. Bless you. Look at four. Do you say, everyone stop before we go. Do you see how I need to work on the numerator and the denominator now? I need to work on both, right? Because they're both separate. So I need to make the top into one fraction and the bottom into one fraction. All right, I need to work on both of them here. It's not like the last two where I didn't need to work on the denominator. All right, so let's work on the top together. However you want to write, I'm going to just separate them here. B squared minus four over four minus one. All right, go ahead, get a common denominator for me. Help me out with that one. Ones. Five, we'll get there. Come on, seven. There we go. Seven again, Connor. What's my common denominator between four and one? Uh, four. Four. There's common denominator. Uh, going deep, Sarah. Twenty. What should I multiply b squared by? Uh, one. one. Good job. So it's just going to be b squared. Yeah. What do you multiply the one by? Four. four. So b squared minus. 
four. There's the top, right? There's the top of my fraction. Now I got to work on the bottom now, make it into one. Everyone all right so far? Any questions? All right, now I got to combine B over four minus a half. Sometimes I'll just have to do one, just sometimes like this one, I'll have to do both. Common denominator for four and two. 18, Oriana, back to you. Four and two, common denominator. Four, good job. Shoom, don't, no, nope, no, nope. 12, there we go. Zach, uh, how about, what should I multiply the B by? B, uh, one. One, good job, so I'm just gonna have B. And what do I have to multiply the two by to get four? Two. two. So this will be B minus two. two. So there's my new numerator and my new denominator by adding and subtracting. Now we're ready to skip and flip. Everyone ready? Okay. Numerator stays the same. B squared minus four over four times flip the denominator four over B minus two. Here we go. Tell me what to do next. Not going to say a word, but we can keep going. Let's go. Ryan, back to you. What do you want me to do? Uh, perfect square. Time sure. Time. What do you got? B plus 2, B minus 2. Yep. Next. I'm not done. Keep going for me. Uh, 18, Oriana. On fire today. Yep. Good job. Nine, Frank, anything else I can do? Cross out the four, out the four and a four. And it looks like I'm going to be having my final answer of B plus two. Final. Anything from you guys? So again, are we doing anything crazy? differently? Nope. We're adding or subtracting first and then we're multiplying. Nothing we haven't done. Yep. There he is. All right. Here we go. I think I'm going to do these next two with you and see if you can do seven on your own. Do we have to do work on numerator, denominator, or both? Both, yep, because they're both, we got to make those fractions into one. So let's start with C minus D minus D over C. Can you help me combine them into one fraction? Okay, Elizabeth, here we go. Common denominator between D and C. Um, DC. DC, put them together. Good job. Next, what am I multiplying by? 10, 7. Connor, what do you want me to multiply that multiply first fraction by? The C, uh, C by the C. All right, what do you get? C squared. C squared. What do you multiply this second one by? Uh, D, so you get D squared. D, so I get minus D squared. There's the first fraction on the numerator. How's that look? Mike, you're right back there. Look good? Don't worry, your number's getting called soon. D over C plus one, here you go, common denominator. Olivia, common denominator between C and one? C, yep, it's the only one there. Multiply, seven, Connor. Multiply by C. Which one? Well, what do I have to multiply D over C by? To get C. Well, I, I already, here's my original denominator. Here's my common one. So what should I multiply by? One. Just one. So in the first spot, I'm going to have D. What do I have to multiply the one by? C. Yep. D plus C. Everyone ready to multiply now? Okay. 
There you go. C squared minus D squared over DC times D plus C over C. I did not. So there you go. Thanks, guys. Thank you. You can tell me one jab. That's fine. I can take criticism as well. All right, what do you want to do up here? Ooh. Jeremy, you're up. Good job. That's difference of two perfect squares, everybody. Even though it's two variables, it's okay. Whew, all right. This is going to be a challenge here. Looks a little different, so I'm going to need a superstars, a little stud here. Sarah, I think you can do it. I called on a stud here. Don't prove me wrong. <laughs> no, they're not. Up. You can cross. You can cross them out, yeah. but they're not opposites. Okay. Ready? Here's why. Here's why. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people behind you too that thought they were opposites. What's the sign on this C? Positive or negative? Okay, they're the same. So right, right, right away, they're not opposites because they're the same. What about the D? Positive N. So they're the exact same, just written backwards, okay? Uh, anything else? Because there is something else up here. Anything else, Elizabeth, you see, maybe? Um, we can't cross out just the C, right? Uh, not these two, because that's connected was, with the subtraction. The yeah, we can. Because oh, okay. this is, what, what's happening between the D and the C down here? What operation? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I can't cross off these two Cs here because that's subtraction. But definitely there. Yep. Left over time. What's left over to write down? Elizabeth, going back to you, what's left over? Um, D minus D over D. And again, we can't cross off those Ds right there because that minus sign. We feel all right? We're going to do one more together, and then number seven, I'm going to let you do on your own. Raise your hand when you think you have the answer, and I'll check it. Yeah, what? No, I'm not straight. Sorry. Write smaller. How about that? You like that recommendation? Yes. Let's go, Ghana. Yes. <coughs> Ready, guys. How many uh, do I have to work on both or just one numerator, denominator? Just, numerator? just the numerator, right? Denominator is already a single fraction. Done. I'll flip it in a second. But we got to work on 5 over A plus B minus 5 over A minus B. All right. We've, we've done these. You, you got addition and subtraction. There's nothing to factor. Anything in common? Anything in common in the denominators? Nope, but we still got to put the leftovers. So what am I going to put in my common denominator? What do you think? Even if you're wrong, who cares? You're trying. Mike, just told you it was coming up. Yeah, you can, but you're still leaving something. You're not giving something else any love. For, that's another leftover, yeah. There it is, A plus B, A minus B. Ooh. Come on, come on, come on. I've got time to wait. Oriana, uh, what should I be multiplying that first fraction by then? Did you say A minus B? Yep, A minus B. And what do I have to do with that 5 then, Oriana? Uh, yeah. Not minus B. Five oh, A. I mean five A. Ready? What do you get? Five A. Minus. Five 
by B. I got to distribute that. Yep. We okay there? A little distribution. All right, what do I multiply the second fraction by? One four. Emma, what do I multiply the second fraction by? A plus B. Why? What are you going to tell me to do here, Ryan? Yeah, what are you going to distribute here? What do you, I'm taking my, I'm stopping here. What do you got to distribute? Negative five, right? We talk, ne when you subtract, you got to make sure that I don't just distribute five. I got to distribute the negative five with it. Ooh. Right? Negative five, distribute, distribute. So minus five A, but also minus five B. Ooh. All right, what happened to the five A's? See ya! Do the B's cancel out though? No, what do you get? That's silly. What's still left, what's left on top? 11? Nope, come on, come on, come on, come on. Seven, Connor, what's left on top? Negative five B and negative five B. Which would be? Uh, 10 B. Negative 10 B over A plus B, A minus B. Whew, that was a lot of work for the top, huh? Welcome to this level of math. All right, are you ready to multiply now? Because you guys said I didn't have to do anything in the denominator, which is true. All right, so negative 10B over A plus B, A minus B times flip, flip, A squared minus B squared over 10. Tell me what to do. Tell me something to do. Whoo, Sarah, 17. Come on now. Um, you can. You want to do that? Yeah. All right, sure. Fun. Uh, others, other things you want to do. There's still more to do, Sarah. Still more to do back there. I got a little difference of two perfect squares in the house, don't I? So I got negative B here, A plus B, A minus B. And then Sarah just said, hey, how about a little difference of perfect squares up top? A squared minus, oh, yeah, how about I factor it? A plus B, A minus B. And then it was over one, I guess, because I already crossed out the 10. Uh-oh, people's eyes are lighting up, hopefully. All right, you're lighting up. Come on, finish this thing. Finish it, 1-9. Lauren, finish this. Um, How? Uh, there you go. Yep, there's the final, negative B. All right, you ready for seven? I will help you start it, but I'm not gonna do the rest of it for you. What do you have to work on, by the way? Both. Top, bottom, both? both? Both, yeah. Three fractions into one. What's gonna be the common denominator of both of those? K to the third, third correct. So now you guys gotta take over and figure out what do I need to multiply each fraction by to get K to the third in the denominator? And then flip, multiply. Come on, come on. When you think you have it, let me know. I'll take a glance at it. You should end up factoring at the end as well. Another hint, factor at the end. Let me just pause this.